Alright guys, in this video I want to start talking to you about the different kinds of lists that you can use in JavaFX. There are actually a couple different kinds. There are these things called tree views, which is actually kind of like this. See how you can like select something and it expands and it might give you more options. So this would be a tree view. They also have like combo boxes where it kind of just looks like a bunch of, you know, like a regular list and you can like select multiple items in it at once. And you can also have like drop down lists, and that's what this tutorial is going to be about. So, again, you already know what drop down list is. It pretty much is a drop down, then you click it, you get like a menu of stuff, and then you click one, and that's your option. So, the starting point for this is just a button, and I'll say whenever you select an item and hit click me, then it's just going to print out in the terminal. And all of these different types of lists are of type observable list. So if I ever say observable list, just think JavaFX list. So let's go ahead and figure out how to create it right now. So under your window, good place to put it. Actually, you might as well put it under the button too. Let's tighten this stuff up. And actually, let me give myself a little bit more padding. All right. So a drop-down list is just called a choice box. Why they name it choice box instead of drop-down? not sure but they did and you can have a bunch of different types of data in the choice box you don't want to mix it up for example you don't want to drop down that's gonna have strings and integers in it together you can have a drop down for strings and you can have another one for integers but you don't want to mix your data together all in the same um, observable list so I'm just gonna use this one for like names of stuff so of course those are strings so in between curly brackets type what type of data do you want to store in your drop down I'll just name it choice box and set this equal to new choice box object right like that and you actually if you ever see this some people actually type string on both sides you don't need to do this since it is implied alright so now we have a blank drop down list that's it pretty boring let's go ahead and stick some items in it so whenever you want to add an item to it there are a couple different techniques and um, let me just say this get items they spell observable wrong can add items to alright so what we're gonna do is we first need a reference to the drop down itself which is choice box and then we call a method called get items so this is gonna get all of the items in your list now I know it's empty right now but whether you're adding the tenth item or the very first item it doesn't matter you still need to get all of the items currently in your list so after this what you can do is you can just say add and then you can add any string to it for example apples that's a make one for fruit so this drop down is going to let the user select their favorite fruit. So again, you can go on and keep doing this one by one. You can add another item, banana, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. That is how I remember to spell bananas. I think it's Gwen Stefani. Thank you very much. So you can either add items one by one or what you can do is if you had a huge list of items or an array, then you can call add all to add several at once so I'm actually gonna throw in um, another fruit of mine which is bacon I think that's my favorite fruit and let's just stick ham and um, meatballs in there so again these are some of my favorite fruits so again what we did is we now have five items in our drop down and these are just two different techniques of adding those items so let me actually show you guys how to do this of course if you ever want to add it to the screen which you probably do then you just add it as expected but check out what happens whenever you run this by default we got our list everything looks good but no option is selected at first I mean we can select bananas and meatballs but again whenever the user launches this program you probably want to have some value in there so for a default value <coughs> uh, 
Uh, sorry, I got black lung from working the mines. All right. So anytime you want a default value, just get a reference to your dropdown and call set value. And again, this is just going to set an initial value. But of course, the user can change this whenever they actually select something. So set a default value. And now whenever you run it, it doesn't work because we need to set this equal to a value that already exists, which is apple zzz, instead of apple. All right, so there you go. So again, whenever you have a default value, make sure that it's actually equal to something that is already inside your list. If a million boxes open right now. All right. So we know how to make a drop down list and display on the screen. Of course, the next logical step we want to do is implement some kind of method to extract the value from it. So I am just going to add a button set on action method. And we'll just build one that says like a get choice. Now, of course, we need to pass in our choice box and make the method. All right. So we'll just say that it's private, void. Get choice, teen choice awards. Why did I say that? No idea. Now, the object that we're passing in, remember, uh, I guess it's not going to highlight for me, but it's a choice box string. And I'm just going to call it choice box. So again, what you can do is whenever you're creating your drop down list, you can just copy this and use it in a parameter whenever you're validating the data. So again, this is what type of object we're going to pass in. This is what type of data it's going to hold. And now we can just do whatever we want. We'll say food equals choice box get value so again what this is going to do is it's going to get the currently selected value whatever option the user selected and now we can just print it out on the screen so system out print food and did I mess anything up hopefully not all right so now if we click it we we'll just print out the default value of course we can select something else bacon meatballs probably want to add a new line there but whatever and there you go so yeah simple as that you can of course like I said print line and then it will kick it off onto a new line instead of printing it all on the same line but there you go that is how you use drop down lists how you add items to them how you set default values and of course how you extract the user's choice or selected item so thank you guys for watching see you guys next time